excretion happens to be a troubled topic for many students. Even though it is just the removal of metabolic waste from the body which would otherwise poison the body. In this lesson, we'll be looking at the nephron which are found in the kidney. The kidney is one of the body's major excretory organs and is responsible for cleaning the blood and maintaining water balance as it produces urine. However, the kidney would be of no use without working nephrons. This lesson is suitable for all students studying the topic excretion. I am Mr. Wilson from CSEC Biology, the cover page. Let's explore the nephron. The nephron lies between the cortex and the medulla of the kidney. The nephron happens to be the kidney's functional unit and is also called the kidney tubule. Being the functional unit, it is pretty much the site of operation. If you were supposed to think of a motor car, in order for that motor car to drive, the functional unit would of course be the engine, which would of course provide that energy for the car to move from place to place. If you were supposed to think about a country, that mega city, if you were supposed to think about that major town that drives commerce, for Jamaica, it would have been Kingston. So it would have been the functional unit for Jamaica. The nephrons carry out ultrafiltration and selective reabsorption during the production of urine. Hence, the blood is cleaned and the water balance of the body is, of course, maintained by the nephron. The nephron, like I said earlier, lies between the cortex and the medulla of the kidney and of course it empties urine in the pelvis now here we have a diagram of the kidney and we're looking at the kidney from the back of the kidney here so you'd observe at the bottom of the screen you're seeing the red line here representing that renal artery the blue line here representing the renal vein and of course you'd have seen the pelvis which is just an enlarged portion of the ureter the nephrons have bowman capsule proximal convoluted tubule and distal convoluted tubule in the cortex the cortex has a lighter color than the medulla and is closer to the part of the kidney which is of course distal to the attachment the medulla is closer to the attachment so we are he saying here that the cortex here is located closer to this portion of the kidney but can you identify the bowman's capsule the proximal convoluted tubule the distal convoluted tubule how well did you do let's check it Bowman's capsule, first convoluted tubule or the proximal convoluted tubule, second convoluted tubule or the distal convoluted tubule. Now proximal convoluted tubules speak to the tubule being closest to the Bowman's capsule. Proximal convoluted tubule closer to the Bowman capsule. Distal, it's a distant away, some distant away from the Bowman capsule, which makes this the proximal convoluted tubule within proximity and distal, some distant away, or first and second convoluted tubule. The nephron have loop of Henle and collecting duct in the medulla. The medulla is darker in color than of course is the cortex and it is closer to the attachment on the kidney so here the attachments are at the bottom you have the pelvis here and you have the blood vessels here however the loop of enli and the collecting duct is of course located in the medulla can you identify the loop of enli what about the collecting duct how well did you do? Let's check it. Loop of Henley, collecting duct. 
it's very important for you to know the parts of the nephron as the parts of the nephron carry out different functions let's explore the parts the diagram shows the nephron with the network of blood vessels that assist the nephron with its operation the nephron or kidney tubules have a network of blood vessels which are wrapped around the tubule the blood vessels along with the nephron facilitates ultra filtration selective reabsorption and of course maintenance of water balance in the body the bowman's capsule becomes a major part of the nephron as molecules from the blood vessels in the glomerulus are forced into the bowman capsule by ultrafiltration these are some of the molecules that are forced across the membrane into the bowman's capsule amino acid urea glucose salts water and of course hormones now let's look at what happens in order to get these molecule from the glomerulus into the bowman's capsule and you'll observe on screen that these areas are labeled now the atriole entering the glomerulus is larger than the atriole leaving now if you observe your screen you'll see a pulsing circle showing the blood vessel labeled the afferent atriole if you were supposed to observe closely you'll observe that this blood vessel is of course larger than the blood vessel that is leaving now the blood vessel that is leaving is called the efferent atriole now because of this difference in the size of the blood vessels it creates a pressure in the glomerulus that squeeze substances through the capillary into the bowman's capsule the process is known as ultrafiltration and is a first step in urine production there we have the glomerulus that network are not of blood vessel through which the substances are squeezed into the bowman capsule so we're seeing the afferent arteriole being the larger arteriole here and the efferent being the smaller arteriole creating that pressure within the knot of blood vessel called the glomerulus causing substances to be squeezed through the membrane into the bowman capsule but what happens in the proximal convoluted tubule in the proximal convoluted tubule which is highlighted on screen or the first convoluted tubule selective reabsorption is evident as useful substances are reabsorbed from the filtrate in the tubule back into the blood now glucose hormones salt water amino acid and of course vitamins are all reabsorbed in the first proximal convoluted tubule it's important to note that some substances that were not forced out into the bowman capsule are forced out here so understand that the tubule is that orange color diagram on your screen and there is movement of substances between that orange diagram called the nephron and the blood vessels and of course it is seeping through the membrane from one side to another from the blood vessels to the nephron and of course from the nephrons to of course the blood vessels it is very important to know that there are several nephrons in the kidney which are of course connected to collecting duct the substances continue to flow through the nephron from the bowman capsule to the proximal convoluted tubule and the selective reabsorption started the substances are going to move into the loop of enli now selective reabsorption of water takes place in the loop of enli now having been reabsorbed due to a regulatory process and selective here 
which suggests that it is just the amount of water that is needed that will be reabsorbed. If it is not needed, then it will not be reabsorbed into the blood vessel. The substances will continue to move into the distal convoluted tubule, or as we call it, the second convoluted tubule. Now, selective reabsorption of salts wa and water takes place in the distal convoluted tubule. And of course, this is regulated by ADH, which is of course known as the antidiuretic hormone. The substances will continue having been reabsorbed, filtered, and ready to leave the body. And if you look at your screen now, you're realizing that there are, there's an animation showing the passage of substances through the nephron and of course passage of substances through the blood vessel to include blood there's also a flow of urine down the collecting duct now urea salts and excess water are collected in the collecting duct as urine and move to the pelvis to be excreted from the body some reabsorption of water if necessary takes place in the collecting duct which is of course driven by ADH. ADH will affect the permeability of the collecting duct and of course the distal convoluted tubule making sure that water balance in the body is maintained. There we have it. How much did you learn from this lesson? Leave two questions from the video in the comment. Other viewers will answer these questions which are based on what you learned. However, you are required to answer these questions just to test how much you've retained from the lesson. What is the function of a kidney? What is the nephron? What is the function of a nephron? Name the parts of the nephron. Distinguish between ultrafiltration and selective reabsorption. Distinguish between the afferent and efferent atriole. For four above, name one substance that is reabsorbed in each named part. What is the role of ADH in the nephron? Number one, the kidneys, which is of course two, clean the blood and maintain water balance in the body. Two. The nephron is the kidney's functional unit, which means that it is the site of operation. Three, the nephron's function is to carry out ultrafiltration, selective reabsorption, assist with water balance in the body, and of course, make urine. Four, the parts of the nephron are Bowman capsule, First convoluted tubule or proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, second convoluted tubule or distal convoluted tubule, and of course, collecting duct. And this shows pretty much the flow direction of filtrate within the nephron. To distinguish between ultrafiltration and selective reabsorption, Ultrafiltration is a process in which substances are forced out of the glomerulus into the Bowman capsule from the blood, while selective reabsorption is a regulatory process in which substances are taken back from the nephron and allowed to re-enter the blood. The process could also see more substances be taken from the blood back into the nephron. Six. To distinguish between the afferent and the efferent atriole. 
The afferent atriole is larger than the efferent atriole and it takes blood to the glomerulus, while the smaller blood vessel, the efferent atriole, takes blood away from the glomerulus. Now you're going to revisit the video to find out the substances that are reabsorbed in four. Be reminded that ADH affects the permeability of the membranes within the collecting duct and distal convoluted tubule causing more water to be reabsorbed when there is added ADH and less water to be reabsorbed when, of course, there is less ADH. Thanks much for watching. This is CSEC Biology, the cover page, and you've been listening to Mr. Wilson. Please be reminded to like, share, and of course, subscribe. Check out our three live classes weekly on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sunday at 5.05 p.m. And we're streaming out of Jamaica in the Caribbean.